accidents, illness, absenteeism, adding up a big score of man hours lost from the machines, precious dollars from paychecks. As much as 12 hours a day for seven days a week, month after month, night work, changing shifts, broken sleep. We have set a mighty production record during the first year of war. We have brought this country's achievement to a proud place among the United Nations. Old men, back to work after years of depression. Women, quickly adjusting themselves to factory noise and heat. boys just out of school, taking on overnight the long hours of hardened men. But the strain has been taking its toll of the nation's health. With the Second World War came the sharp realization that a man in the army is as good as the food he eats. Came to the new thinking that if the army needs balanced feeding, so too do the workers that with new food limitations arising out of the war, the question of proper feeding demanded serious attention, that the hidden hunger story of the nutritionists was a serious matter, bearing directly on man hours and capacity to work, and on the national health. And so governments everywhere began a new campaign for better feeding, a campaign urged on by the needs of war, asking the cooperation of managements to investigate the eating facilities of the employees and try and improve them. Asking the cooperation of the men themselves to take new note of what they are eating, to throw over some of their old eating habits and see new value in good, wholesome food, to eat these foods first and then any others especially liked, to follow the daily food rules simplified by dietitians. Milk, at least one half pint each day, and some cheese when available. Meat, one serving a day of meat or fish to build and repair the body. And remember, liver once a week. Vegetables, at least one serving a day of potatoes. And two servings of other vegetables, especially the green and yellow ones. One serving should be raw. You assure them that no food value is lost in the cooking. Fruits. One serving each day of stewed or raw fruit, and one of citrus fruit or tomato juice. These fight the hidden hunger which takes the fun out of life. Eggs. At least three or four each week. Eggs are in a special class because of the iron that's in them. Cereals. Eat vitamin B bread. Bread and whole grain cereals make the extra calories needed for heavy work. We can't begin to keep the food rules if we don't start the day with a good, wholesome breakfast. We should eat one-third of the day's food at breakfast. That's all very well about good nutrition, but let's get down to hard living facts. What about guys like Joe here, who can't get breakfast at home? and just pops into the nearest all-night cafe for coffee and a snack. Do you food people ever think of these things? Yes, I know. Coffee and a snack. Statistics show an alarming number of workers eat that kind of breakfast. Good food, but not enough to work on. And how about Bill, whose wife works and needs her sleep? He makes do the best he can. I know. Women workers in industry increased nearly tenfold by 1943 and the demands of industry took first place over the home. And how about John, who has been so tired for so long that his stomach won't take food in the early hours of the morning? Yes, there are thousands of men like John. And a lot of us always work on a coffee breakfast. We get along all right. You think you do. Of 
course, many of us are lucky enough to have a good home. Or maybe a landlady who will give us a good breakfast. And some of us can get breakfast at the plant. Yes, a hot breakfast at the plant can be the answer to a lot of the problems. But the thing is, you can't afford to wait for new public interest in food to reach all of you. You can't wait, for each day of long hours and strain is taking its toll of your health. Meanwhile, I'll wager the man in the local cafe would make something better than a snack for you, if you'd ask him, and if you got up ten minutes earlier and had time to eat it. And Bill, why not put some porridge on to cook the night before? It could heat while you were dressing, and could give you something more substantial to work on than just a piece of toast. And John, ask your wife to give you a whipped up egg and milk, or some thin gruel. Something that would be, be kind to your stomach and protect you against the strain of working without food. And as for the coffee only people, I'm not going to waste words on them. But they'll pay in lagging hours, less output, and the coffee getaways will count up to a poor score of health in the future. Going out fortified with a good breakfast is the first step in keeping to the health rules for the day. Ensuring enough energy to see you through the strain of the day's work. With enough pep left after the whistle blows to enjoy the other things that go to make life worthwhile. A good breakfast is the first step toward keeping the morning freshness through till noon. In avoiding the mid-morning lag that lowers production, makes work a burden, and steals from health. Food to start the day right. To maintain skill and efficiency. Food to resist the strain of noise and heat. Breakfast is important to get through the day without lag, especially if the lunchbox is to provide the noon meal. In spite of a growing movement for cafeteria feeding, the majority of workers still depend upon the lunchbox for their noon meal. This carried lunch, in time of food limitations and extra pressure on the worker, is more than ever important today. The lunchbox should contain one third of the day's food. A poor lunchbox will have mainly starchy food. A good one will have something from each of three different food groups. A main dish, such as meat, fish, cheese or eggs. Milk to drink, or in soup or pudding. And fruit or vegetable, or both, preferably raw. The lunchbox being one of the important meals of the day, should be planned in relation to the foods eaten at other meals, and should have for certain some fresh fruit or vegetable. Hey, look at the kid eating the carrot. Well, what's the big idea, Russell? Mm -hmm. This carrot, my friends, is just packed with vitamins. Few people don't know what's good for you, that's all. Well, I know when I eat it rather than getting everything that's in it. It's not being spoiled by bad cooks. Oh, I don't know. If you had a cook like Phyllis here, you'd be full of vitamins. Tell me more, I will. Here, Phil, let's have a bite. Mm, no, thanks. Go on, try it. Well, okay. If you'd eat more of these, you'd get some color in your cheeks. Workers who take steps to guard their health by wise choice of food will be repaid in health, happiness, 
and increased earnings. Time lost due to illness is costing Canadian factory workers annually an estimated $135 million in wages. As compared with other countries, ours is rich in food, yet only a small percentage of us are well fed. Today it is being realized more and more that food is power, that skill and morale too hinge on proper nutrition and health. But good beginnings at better feeding are defeated if foolish choice is made in selecting food. Scientific surveys indicate that well over half the men and nearly three quarters of the women eating in factory cafeterias are not choosing a good lunch. Choosing good food when it is there before him. By so doing, the worker assumes his part of the responsibility. So he's a good steady fellow. Still got money in his pocket for a good time on Friday. Good husband material, eh girls? With the cooperation of the workers, scientific feeding can be made to reach all workers. This is agreed by forward-thinking people to be the next significant advance in industry. Scientific feeding with skilled dietitians to supervise the handling of food, to secure for the workers a well-balanced meal. To strike at the roots of bad nutrition, by reaching the thousands of workers who man the plants and offices. Men and women fully aware of the value of good food in a world torn by war and devastation. Workers fully aware of the need to use food wisely to protect their health for the job that is theirs today. We have met the needs of war. We have experienced the satisfaction of full employment and a job well done. We have caught a glimpse of the world of tomorrow. We look to the day when our energies and resources will turn to production of goods for human needs and enjoyment. We must protect our health for the job of tomorrow.